Good morning to all. Today I am going to present the introduction of Jayasree Mistra's novel Ancient Promises. Jayasree Mistra is an Indian author who debut novel Ancient Promises was published and sold worldwide by Penguin UK and became a major best seller in India. It is now a prescribed text on several university B English literature courses. Subsequent books were a comedy of manner called Accidents like Love and Marriage and novel about bereavement called Afterwards. Her fourth novel, Rani, is historical fiction based on life of Rani Lakshmi Bai of Jhansi. This was published by Penguin in December 2007 and banned soon after by Uttar Pradesh state government in India. In 2009, Mistra signed a three-book deal with Avon, the commercial fiction imprint of Harper Collins UK. The first of these books, called Secret and Lies, was published in June 2009. While the next in the series Secret and Sins was released in July 2010 Secret and Lies appeared on Heat Seekers list in Britain bookseller magazine bestseller list in the summer of 2009 the third book a scandalous secret was released in May 2011 at the Hay on Fest Hay on Bay festival Mr Ben on to edit an anthology of writings on the subject of motherhood as a fundraising project for save the children india which was published by the feminist publishing house suban in 2012 in january 2050 mistra eight novel a love story for my sister was published by harper collins part historical and part contemporary it explores stockholm syndrome through the story of general wheeler's daughter margaret who was kidnapped during the 1857 uprising mistra's ninth book a house for Ms. mr mistra is her first work on non fiction a memoir of the two years she and her husband spent living in kerala while trying to build a studio on beach it filled with personal anecdotes and also paint an amusing picture of present day life in kerala jayasree mistra has ma in literature from kerala university and two post graduate diplomas from the university of london first in special education and the second broadcast journalism she was awarded a scholarship by the charles valleys for india trust in order to complete her course in special education misra worked for several year in the child care department of social services Packing Hampshire and more recently as a film classifier at the British Board of Film Classification in London, England, she resigned at the end of 2009 after a seven-year stint when she went to live in New Delhi, India, where she helped to start a residential project for adults with learning disabilities. The house she built on Valley Beach in Trivandrum, Kerala, is being to development into a writers residency jayasree mistra projects herself as an ideal spoken person as well as the representative of women folk of the current time the literary career of her took off with the very popular novel ancient promises that was released in 2000 the author primary focus is actually on the struggles of women women in her novel appear to be a personification of contemporary women who could be in a position to deal with the bur- the burden of inhibition they carried from generation to generation the household step up of all heroines of misra is strictly patriarchal domestic violence is portrayed perfectly in the novel this particular article is designed to analyze as well as determine the idea of new woman in the novels of jay sree misra the study additionally seeks to trace the journey of new woman tracing herself at various phases of life misra portrays the crucial circumstances of society in a vulnerable fashion her protagonist tells exactly how the female is subverted by the traditional codes female is actually anticipated to do the gender roles to adjust as well as the protagonist of her are actually pressured to exit beyond the mental boundaries of theirs she attacked the context which result in psychological anguish to female 
Misra provide a unique mental perspective of females, bringing out versions, mental structures as well as character patterns. She fathoms the stamina of females of contemporary society. Misra has proved that family constantly offers abundant fictional content due to the range of complexity of human relationship it provides. As a writer, she concentrates on the preoccupation of her with familial themes as well as the female perspective of the family. The man-woman bonding, furthermore, the conflict between tradition as well as modernity discovers a prominent spot in the portrayal of females by J. Sri Misra. Thank you. Good morning to one and all, respected journalists and all my dear friends. Today, I am here to introduce a novel, Ancient Promises. Ancient Promises is J. Srimisra's debate book with a fresh narrative voice in comparison with the other novelists of her time. An unforgettable story told in the first person narrative. Ancient Promises combines in its narrative strategy, romance, myth, and social criticism. Jane Austen succeeded in bringing irony in her novels through interesting and poignant observations, which were most often witty as well. Taking the same line of novel writing strategy, J. Srimisra gives an opportunity for readers to enjoy the book in multiple perspectives than a single facetted love story. Of course, Janu, the protagonist, is the narrator and this is her story. However, this is also the story of Kerala and its marriage customs. Many irrational and unjust customs still exist in the southern land of India. Many European cultures have established trade relations with Kerala. But in the long run, it can also be observed that the nature of how people behave, the praying and the gossiping and the black beating didn't change at all. Neither had any change withstood the sad courtierness of Kela's narrow-minded orange marriage customs. Here we can see a victim of an orange marriage. Ancient Promises by J. Srimisra was a tremendous enjoyable, though there is pain that comes along with the joy of seeing a life unfold. Perhaps that is the way it must be, as if Ancient Promises fulfilled now. It begins with the statement of J. Srimisra, My marriage ended today. The words of her mother as they leave the court. Her voice and answers brimming with sadness that it had been my fate indicate the main theme of the novel. The novel discusses how Indian parents fail to understand their children and also about the anxiety undergone by the teenage girl's parents. It also portrays how marriage becomes a poignant weapon in the hands of men in controlling and suppressing women. Janu first meets Arjun in the company of her classmate and later they have their casual meetings and became close. She is thrilled over the concept of love. Even though she is not completely sure if she is supposed to have know the feeling at this tender age. Her father is totally against the concept of and girls and boys falling in love and roaming around with each other. 
Janu's parents have lived a conventional life and believe in children settling in life with their parents' choice and blessings. Their daughter finding a life partner for herself is quite unimaginable for them. They believe that parents know what is best for their children. Janu is tense and at the same time thrilled to keep a secret from her parents, especially her meetings with Arjun at Charmina. But soon she caught red handed and the parents lost their trust in her. She is then taken to Kerala and her wish to continue her education after schooling is not fulfilled. During her visit to Kerala, fate plays rather a cruel game with her when Mahesh Rimara comes with a proposal for her. She does not completely disagree to her parents' wishes as she wants to compensate her secretive behavior which wants upset them. However, she puts forward pity reasons for not getting married. Arjun has succeeded and admission to her university by that time and has decided to join his mother in England. She sends a letter to Arjun informing him about the proposal and gets married to Suresh at Guruvayu Temple with the blessings of the members of the family. She has sacrificed her love for Arjun. Her decision to compel with the decision of the family members shows how partially indoctrinations has corrupted the rationality and objectivity of even educated women. She is not bold enough to tell her parents about her love and to say no to marrying Suresh as which damage the good name and reputation of her family. Her mother says the reputation of the families were carried on the shoulders of the daughter. Janu would have kept this in mind when she had got the proposal. This silent acceptance shows that Janu is born and brought up in a family which compels women to accept and internalize feminine virtues of meekness, obedience and modesty. There is a clash between traditional values and the modern concept of freedom. Even though Janu is a modern girl, she decides to become a meek and obedient daughter. When she decides not to go against her parents, she feels odd even on the day of her marriage, being covered up in the traditional dress. The image of a school-going girl, clad in jeans, starts receding from her mind. Though she feels a fish out of water, she never expresses her feelings. A sonorous drumbeat took up in her heart. Don't trip, don't fall, don't go and ruin it all. Don't cry, don't say I should not be here at all. The main regulations that a girl is supposed to follow after marriage teach her about the submissive role she has to play once she becomes a wife. Janu says while walking with him around the fluttering velak at the temple, my head bowed. I had plenty of times to observe his feet as he walked ahead of me. I had felt a sudden launching realization that I was getting more time to familiarize myself with the feet of the man I was marrying than his face. Jana knows that she is supposed to obey her husband's order to become his mere shadow and nothing more. A woman is always allowed to stand behind the man, never in front of him to voice her opinions. Her expectations when she enters the Mara household are shattered with a list of do's and do nots. On the first morning, she wakes up early and enters the kitchen only after taking bath as her mother 
has instructed her to do so. As she is not fluent in Malayalam, she speaks in English to express herself. Her cottage of please and thank yous in return of every dialogue result in her getting snapped by her mother-in-law. She tries hard to step into the shoes of an ideal wife. Life of Janu and Suresh is one of monotony and boredom. As it becomes a matter of rituals and habit resulting in disharmony in their conjugal life. Suresh considers his wife only as a homemaker to be possessed as a private property. So he automatically and systematically controls her secularity, mortality, speech and indirectly her identity. She remains invisible and silent in the Mara household. Her indifferent husband is too busy to notice the struggle she undergoes to adjust herself with the customs and traditions of the family. He purely notices her and she feels insignificant. She feels lonely even in the midst of the crowd. However, she hopes that motherhood would improve her status. Unfortunately, a mentally retarded child is born to her. She does not get any support from her husband. He wants to escape from the suffocating conditions in the household. She contemplates, if I did leave Kela with a baby and no education to speak of, how far could I go? She decides to get a BA degree in English literature through distant educations as an answer to the seemingly erotic questions. Thus, unknowingly, she evolves and uplifts herself as a person. Her mother-in-law says, I'm not having people pointing at us and pitying us. Our family is always married in this town. However, Janu does not leave her daughter even after the main prickling comments of her mother-in-law. As a mother, she understands that a child like Rhea, if left uncared for, would proceed. Thus, Rhea gives her the strength to raise her voice against the rules and conventions of, and to fight back. Rhea's schooling ends in a disaster as she gets expelled from her school for the reason that she is weak in studies. This problem gives her an idea to take her abroad for education. Unknowingly, Janu takes her destiny in her own hands and decides her future. She then offers to help the early invention group at the understaffed school. This was partially to keep an eye on Rhea and to escape from the Mara's control and also to equip herself better to deal with Rhea's problem. Sheila Kuyakus advises her to go abroad to do a course in special education and to take Rhea with her. This space for a turning point in her life and helps her to stand on her own legs. When she goes to Delhi, to attend an interview, she happens to meet Lena and meets Arjun. She decides to go to England and not to America to pursue her education so that she could live with Arjun. She makes up her mind to get a divorce from Suresh and decides to tell him after reaching home. Janu reveals her plan to Suresh. He begins angry on hearing this and considers it an insult to his manhood. In order to stop her from going away, he decides to spread a rumor that she is mentally unstable. She is taken to Chotanikara in order to get rid of the so-called evil spirits from her body. She is emotionally tortured by the Marar family. When her mother comes to know about the torture in the Marar household, 
she decides to take her home and get a divorce. Suresh does not agree for a divorce as it would mar the reputation of the family. He takes Rukia with him and since she has no another choice, Janu leaves for England with Arjun. After staying a few months there, she realizes that her daughter is her first priority. She returns to India and this time she gets a divorce and Rhea is allowed her to be with her mother. The novel ends with the statement, Tomorrow the next chapter would begin. Which is rather a hopeful note that someday Janagi would marry Arjun. Good morning everyone. Today I am here to introduce some characters of Jaisri Misra's novel Ancient Promises. Ancient Promises is a sensitive account of a girl's effort to find her destination in life. It is full of keen psychological observations and culminates in a same and balanced view of life. My duty is to introduce the major characters of the novel. Here are Janagi, known as Janu, is the protagonist in the story, Ancient Promises. She is a Malayali Nair born in Kerala, but brought up and educated in Delhi. Although her parents' roots are in Alapura, they are settled in Delhi. Her father is an army officer, Ummi, and mother is Mani. She is studying in an Irish girls' school where her boy, best friend is Lena. The story actually starts when she falls in love with a boy called Arjun, who is a cricketer, when she was 16. But her faith was another one. Janu's parents came to know about her relation with Arjun and decided her marriage with another guy named Suresh from a well-known family. At the age of 18, unwillingly, she agrees for the marriage. And then on her life starts to turn upside down. Her family life was tragic. Her child Rhea was all mentally challenged. The story tells about the struggles Janu is going through. We can understand that Janu is a strong woman and also a good mother. She is a good daughter for her parents too. She kept aside all her dreams for her parents' happiness. Another important character in the novel was Arjun Mistra. He was the boyfriend of Janu. He was a local school cricketer hero who was the best friend of Janu's best friend Lena's boyfriend. He was a student of a boys' school near to Janu's school. Like Janu, Arjun is also a good son who looked after his mother well. The turning point in the story is when Arjun left Delhi to UK with his mother. This led one of the main reasons for Janu to get married to Suresh and she was censured and confused to, about her relation with Arjun. Next character was Suresh. He is the husband of Janu who never loved her and supported her. Her the mem is the member of Mara family where the role of the family is his mother who decided everything. Suresh is both a bad husband and a father who is always concerned just about his business. He is very doof and uncaring. Good morning to one and all. Today I am going to see the critical appreciation of the novel Ancient Promises by J. Sri Misra. J. Sri Misra's Ancient Promises, a sensitive account of a girl's effort to find her destination in life, is full of keen psychological observations and culminates in a sane and balanced view of life. Transplanted from her home and the familiar world of Delhi at the age of 18 to a highly conventional and aristocratic Naya family in Kerala, suffering from the pangs of separation from her first love, married to a man who is neither good nor bad but simply an expert in the art of escape and surrounded by the nasty and sly in-laws who will never let her belong to their world, 
The problems Janu has to face are numerous. All her efforts to endear herself to the family of her husband, which includes even begetting a child who is supposed to bridge the gap between herself and her new family are in vain. It comes as a terrible shock to her when her child is declared mentally handicapped, but her intense attachment with the baby forms her best protection and surprisingly also her means of salvation. She starts rebelling against the snobbish conventions of the family and slowly there emerges the first faint outline of a plan of escape. She manages a foreign scholarship to go abroad and it is then when she is almost ready to get out that the panicky husband and in-laws try their best to stop her. The last step in this manoeuvre is to take away her daughter Rhea. Still she goes to London and completes her course. These are her stolen days of perfect happiness with her lover Arjun. But she must return to Kerala to get her Rhea back because she believes that a life of happiness built on the pain and sufferings of other people cannot last. There is a hole in her soul which only her daughter can fill. Thus her return to Kerala is at the risk of losing even the only other happiness of her life that is urgent. Back in Kerala, things suddenly turn out in her favour. She gets the divorce, Rhea is returned to her and she is ready to start a new life with Arjun. Her first affair with Arjun is almost like a dream. Her marriage into the Marar family is the reality into which she wakes up. After 10 years, when she steps back into her dream at Delhi, she is so much distanced from her married life, both emotionally and geographically, that the reality took like some previous life, a kind of misty dream. It had all to happen like that. Nothing is wasted, nothing is meaningless. She had to sacrifice 10 years of her life, 10 long years to pay off some unknown debt from a previous birth to the Marar family and that is the price with which she buys her future happiness with Arjun. Her 48 weekends with Arjun at Milton Keen are stolen or borrowed and for her to start a new life of her own, she has to get her daughter back. Janu, the heroine of the ancient promises, presents this question in the very beginning of the book. She wonders if some god had finally given up his endless task, had finally drawn all his tools in sheer despair at the weight of errors and mistakes that he simply wasn't able to control anymore. She was not sure whether it was her mistake or his. Was it a mistake at all or part of some grand plan? That's what I want to think it was, a grand plan, ancient and meaningful and free of blame. She is sure that there has to be a reason for everything and that nothing can happen without a reason. And the whole of the story succeeds in bringing out this conviction in a forceful and convincing way. Even as a young girl of 18, Janu was fully aware that the responsibility of her actions rested entirely with herself. It was her decision to marry Suresh. If the character of Arjun had been developed more truly and if we had witnessed his pain and disappointment at her betrayal, our response to Janu's actions could not have been an unequal as it is now. The same argument is true about Suresh too, for given a glimpse into his thoughts and feelings at her betrayal, it would have been difficult to withhold moral judgment from Janu's actions. Similarly, when Janu rushes into the arms of Arjun and she enjoys the moment of bliss without guilt, we are convinced that it is beyond blame. For one thing, the dream-like figure of Arjun does not seem to be real enough to bring in moral censure. What she experiences then is a moment of pure bliss, uncontaminated by any bitterness or selfishness or even a sense of taking revenge on her insensitive husband. Nowadays, terms like honesty, sincerity, integrity, etc. have become somewhat outdated in literary criticism. But ancient promises makes it impact mainly through the writer's honest approach to life and as a female building strawman, 
it makes its mark with the as touching clarity and intensity buildings from an is a literary genre that focuses on the psychological moral growth of the protagonist from youth to adulthood in which character change is important janu has fought her fights with unrelenting determination and in the course of the whole novel never for a moment does she become selfish or inhuman she has never betrayed her true self and it is not something we can say of many people women especially indian women are deeply bound by the age old customs of a society that is notoriously male dominated a lot of brides in india are facing the same problem as janu only a few marriages genuinely turn out to be good rest continues with adjustment and compromises tied together by fear of social stigma the novel exposes the atrocities faced by women because of tradition culture and society like a modern woman janu comes out of her marriage to lead a happy life with her lover breaking this sacred bonds of marriage and tradition ancient promises is a typical example of feminist movement as it shows the way a woman is treated in the indian society ancient promises the moving story of one woman's painful journey of self discovery it is about marriage a divorce and the motherhood it is about why love and loss sometimes seem to have little control over our destinies the additional question of the novel importance of the title ancient promises feministic view of jayasree misra and ancient promises consider jayasree misra's ancient promises as a female builders romance what are the problem faced by janu write the writing style of jayasree misra character analysis of arjun and suresh can ancient promises be read as a victory of determinism over providence